Mathematics is an infinite field with a countless number of incredible findings. But today, I'd like to narrow it down to the six most fascinating mathematical discoveries that we have in this list right here. The first question I gotta ask you is this. Can we trust our brains and intuition when it comes to figuring out how the world works? No. No. And we know that because of non-Euclidean geometry. From what I've heard of it is that non-Euclidean geometry defies our basic understanding of space. So it's not intuitive geometry, but what does it do exactly? It shows us that there is more than one way to see the universe. It's no less real than intuitive or Euclidean geometry because it's crucial for understanding relativity and the true shape of our universe. Its main thing is the parallel postulate, which states that through a point not on a given line, there is exactly one line parallel to the given line. Also, if the sum of angles is less than 180 degrees, the lines are bound to intersect. But if the angle is 180 degrees exactly, the lines will never intersect. Okay, and how did that change? The shock came in the 19th century, when mathematicians like Gauss, Bollier, and Lobachevsky independently developed non-Euclidean geometry, where the parallel postulate does not hold. In these geometries, through a point not on a given line, there can be no parallel lines, as in spherical geometry, or more than one, as in hyperbolic geometry. This discovery was revolutionary and counterintuitive, as it suggested that the nature of space could be fundamentally different from what Euclid's geometry had described. Later, this became a cornerstone of Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, where the presence of mass and energy can warp space-time, forming non-Euclidean geometry. That's so weird. It makes me really uncomfortable that our brain actually limits our understanding. We tend to seek explanations that we can wrap our brains around, but if it's like if it doesn't really make sense, we can't really grasp it. Right. But unfortunately, we'll have to learn how to live with the discomfort of the fact that some things will remain unproven. Godel showed it to us through Godel's theorems. He kind of ruined the image mathematicians have of a complete and consistent mathematical universe. Godel's theorems specifically target certain types of mathematical systems that are complex enough to include arithmetics. He's saying that in these complex systems, there are indeed statements or propositions that cannot be proven true or false mm -hmm. using the rules of the system itself. To clarify, a proposition in mathematics is basically a statement or claim that can either be true or false. For example, the sum of two even numbers is even, is a proposition because it makes a claim that can be tested and found to be true. And how did he do that? In practice, he created a mathematical statement that says this statement cannot be proven only using logic. They just show one thing, that you cannot have completeness and consistency. If you want to have a complete theory, it needs to be inconsistent. So there will be some contradictions. If you want to have a consistent theory with no contradictions, it will be incomplete. These theorems, they just apply for those areas that are complex enough to include arithmetics. But there are some mathematical theories, some, some systems that they do not require arithmetics. I have some examples here. Propositional logic. So it does not use addition, subtraction, any of this, just logical statements using quantifiers like for each, there is, or things like and, or, okay? Another example is Euclidean geometry. There is no arithmetics on it in its most basic version. So what does it mean? It means that these areas, they're kind of immune to Gödel's theorems, okay? Gilbert, a mathematician of the time, had like a movement trying to prove that yes, mathematics is consistent and complete. And Gödel was the one that came and said, no, it is impossible. He proved mathematically that there is an inconsistency or incompleteness with our mathematical logic in the foundational basis. Okay, but doesn't it therefore have a problem? The foundation has a problem because we're bound to get contradictions. Ta da We got to. That's the. That's how beautiful this theory is. Because if there is a problem with the foundation, what are we doing here? And nobody knows how to fix this. Well, that's really uncomfortable. Let's jump to something a bit more concrete and everyday. Computers, which are powered by algorithms. We don't really think about it, but mathematicians are the ones who made it possible. Right. Algorithms are the step-by-step -step soul of computer operations and problem solving across many disciplines. What do you mean by problem solving across disciplines? Well, instead, let's start with a different approach. We associate algorithms with computers, 
But actually, their discovery dates back all the way to a mathematician named Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi. In his work, The Compendious Book on Calculation by Completion and Balancing, he introduced the concepts of algebra. So how does algebra relate to algorithms? Well, because he was the first one to make algebra systematic, we now recognize it as an algorithm, a set of instructions for solving a specific problem. Okay, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Moving on to a topic I honestly know nothing about, Mandelbrot sets. What's that? I know them as really pretty spirals. The Mendelbrot set shows us that infinite complexity arises from simple rules. It's incredibly interesting. The patterns made by fractals are everywhere, from mountain ranges to blood vessels. And how can such a thing be expressed mathematically? It is pretty remarkable that some sets are infinitely complex, but they are actually generated by a very simple mathematical equation. The Mendel-Brot set is defined in the complex plane and is generated by this iterative equation, where c is a complex number and z is iterated starting from zero. No matter how much you zoom in on the boundary of the Mendel-Brot set, you will find an endless variety of shapes and patterns that echo the whole. This means that the set contains an infinite number of miniature versions of itself, a hallmark of fractals. And other than being beautiful, are there any practical applications? Yeah, the discovery of the Mendel-Brot set and all of its properties had profound implications for the study of complex systems, chaos theory, and the nature of mathematical beauty. It showed that complex and seemingly organic patterns could emerge from simple mathematical rules, challenging previous assumptions about the relationship between simplicity and complexity. You mentioned there's something called chaos theory, in which the Mandelbrot set has helped. I don't really know how, but it had. It's also known as the butterfly effect. Okay, this one right now, in my opinion, could be ranked at least among the top three most shocking mathematical discoveries ever because it has direct implications in our daily lives. And I can't think about one area of study where it has no applications. It deals with the behavior of dynamical systems that are highly sensitive to initial conditions. I know it's used to predict weather patterns and things like that. And beyond that? It's really applicable in anything. This concept was popularized by meteorologist Edward Lawrence in the 1960s. Lawrence discovered it somewhat by accident when he entered slightly different initial conditions into his weather prediction model, expecting to get roughly the same results. Instead, the minor alteration drastically changed the whole pattern forecasted by the model. This led to the realization that long-term predictions for certain dynamic systems, like the weather, are fundamentally impossible due to their sensitive dependence on initial conditions. The discovery was shocking because it challenged the prevailing Newtonian paradigm that the universe is orderly and predictable. Instead, chaos theory shows that even deterministic systems, those without any random components, can behave in unpredictable ways. This has profound implications not just for mathematics and meteorology, but also for physics, engineering, economics, biology, and many other fields. The introduction of chaos theory has led to advancements in various areas, including the study of heart rhythms, brain function, stock market patterns, and ecological systems. Its discovery marked a significant shift in our understanding of the natural world. It emphasized the limits of prediction and the intrinsic unpredictability of complex systems. Let's leave it off with the mysterious Fermat's theorem. What is this equation supposed to tell me? The crazy part begins with how the theorem was introduced to the world. Pierre de Fermat, a 17th century French lawyer and amateur mathematician, scribbled a note in the margin of his copy of an ancient Greek text, Arithmetica, by Diophantus, claiming he had discovered a truly marvelous proof of this statement, which the margin was too narrow to contain. Fermat never shared this proof during his lifetime, and despite his contributions to mathematics, this particular claim was left as a mystery. When it was found after his death, it created chaos. It is a simple enough equation. But proving whether it was true or false baffled mathematicians and became one of the most popular and solved problems in mathematics. This theorem states that no three positive integers, x, y, and z, can satisfy the equation for any integer value n greater than 2, which in simpler terms means that if we try to use n equals 2, 
we can find numbers that work, like 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. This works because 9 plus 16 is 25, and those are all whole numbers. But if we try to find whole numbers that work for n equals 3, or any number bigger than 2, we won't be able to find any. But has anyone ever solved it? It remained unsolved for over 350 years. But in 1994, a British mathematician named Andrew Wiles, with the help of Richard Taylor, successfully proved the theorem. The proof was complex and built upon many areas of mathematics, including algebraic geometry and number theory. This tiny little theorem helped significantly in number theory, along with other areas of mathematics, of course. By the way, I would like to include another discovery here. It's one of my personal favorites, especially because of how bizarre the mathematician who discovered it behaved. Check it out here. 